This lesson is going to cover section 3.5 in your textbook, Parallel Lines and Triangles. And the two things that we're going to do are we're going to use parallel lines to prove a theorem about triangles, and we're also going to find the measures of the angles of triangles. The first thing you're going to want to put into your notes is postulate 3.2 called the parallel postulate. The parallel postulate says that through a, through a point not on a line, there is one and only one line parallel to the given line. So in a picture, what we have is we have a line L and a point that is not on that line. We'll call that point P. And this postulate just says that through that point P, there is one and only one line that is going to be parallel to L. So if I were to draw that one and only one line in, it would look like this. So it's saying we can't have more than one of these lines. There's one and only one line that we can draw through P that is going to be parallel to L. We can't have more than one. There is just this only one. And I'll go ahead and put the words down on here uh, so that you can put it into your notes. So here's the wording of the parallel postulate through a point, not on a line. There is one and only one line parallel to the given line. So if you need to write that down or draw the picture, you can pause the video now and do so. The postulate from the previous slide is actually going to, going to help us with the proof of this theorem. And this is a theorem you may know already. But it's theorem 311 in your book, the triangle angle sum theorem. And it says the sum of the measures of the interior angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. So given this triangle, the theorem says that the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle C will add to 180 degrees. And because it's a theorem, it's true all the time. So this is the case for any triangle that we run into. It can be obtuse, it can be acute, it can be a right triangle. Any triangle that we find or that we come across, the sum of the measures of the interior angles, A, B, and C, will always add to 180 degrees. Now to prove this theorem, we would need to use this postulate, uh, the parallel postulate. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to draw a parallel line. And I'm going to make it parallel to AC. So the parallel postulate says through this point B, there's just one parallel line I can draw. So I'm going to draw this in so that this line, I'll call it L, and the line segment AC are parallel. When I do that, I create a couple more angles, and I'm going to call them 4 and 5. Remember, what we're trying to prove here is that 1, the measure of angle 1, plus the measure of angle 2, plus the measure of angle 3, is 180 degrees. And I'm not going to write a formal proof, but we're going to at least talk through this. And given that I have two parallel lines, L and the segment AC, which I'm Go ahead and color in here. We end up with some pairs of angles. Let's first consider the transversal AB. I'm going to darken that one in so we can see it. What kind of angles are 1 and 4? What is the name of them? Well, because we have two parallel lines cut by a transversal, 1 and 4 are alternate interior angles. And what do we know about alternate interior angles? Well, they're congruent. And the same thing holds for angles 5 and 3. They are also alternate interior angles. So we're going to use that fact here to kind of do a real quick informal proof here that if we look at just this part of our picture, we would say that the measure of angle 4 plus the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 5, since 4, 2, and 5 make up a straight line, 
then angle 4, angle 2, and angle 5, they add to 180. And since we already said that 1 and 4 were alternate interior, I can do a quick substitution because 1 and 4 are equal. And 3 and 5 are alternate interior, so I can do another quick substitution, and 3 and 5 are equal. I can throw in angle 2. I'm not going to substitute for it. And we can see that 1 plus 2 plus 3, by substituting, is also 180. And that's what we were trying to show. So this is a real quick informal proof of why this theorem is true. So that, try this problem on your own. We're given two of the three angles of a triangle. What we're looking for is what is the measure of angle C. So give this one a quick try and put your answer in the blank and then we'll work it together. Well, if we know that they all add to 180 degrees, angle B is 120, angle A is 38, so that's 158 degrees between the two of them. So what's left over for the third? Well, we just subtract from 180 to find what's left over. So 180 minus 58 would be 22 degrees. So the measure of angle C would be 22 degrees. All right, let's try another one. In this one, what I've done is I've drawn an exterior angle of a triangle. An exterior angle is an angle formed by a side and an extension of an adjacent side. So what I've done is I've just extended the bottom of the triangle to go out a little bit further, thus creating an angle outside of the triangle. And it's called an exterior angle. So what we want to do is we want to find the measure of angle 1 and the measure of angle 2. And to do that, we have to understand what is the relationship between angle 1 and angle 2. So what I want you to do is try and find the measure of angle 1, and then find the measure of angle 2, and answer that question uh, in the slide. Okay, now that you've had a chance to answer it, let's work it. The measure of angle 1, it's inside the triangle, so what we need to do is we need to take 88... There we go, 88 plus 40, that's 128 degrees. And knowing that all three of them are supposed to add to 180, we already have 128 for the two of them, so we're going to take 180 minus 128, and we should get 52 degrees for angle 1. Well, knowing the relationship between angle 1 and angle 2, angle 1 and angle 2, they're a linear pair, then we know that if we know angle 1 is 52, then angle 2 is going to be 180 minus 52. And 180 minus 52 is 128 degrees. Now, do you see a relationship between the measure of angle 2 and the two angles that were given? In other words, the measure of angle 2 is 128 degrees. The other two angles in the triangle, not angle 1, the one that's adjacent to it, but these two over here are the same. If we take 40 plus 28, we get 128 degrees. And that leads us to another theorem. That theorem is theorem 312. It's called the Triangle Exterior Angle Sum Theorem. And I'm going to put it in words and then we're going to draw a picture of what's going on. The theorem says that the measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the two remote interior angles. Now that sounds confusing, but let's look at it with a picture. So I'm going to make a triangle. Let's make it look... Oh, lost my marker. We're going to say we've got angle 1 two, three, and four. So from the picture, what the theorem is saying is that the measure of an exterior angle, in this case one, the measure of angle one, is equal to the sum of the two remote interior angles. And when we talk about the word remote, remember remote kind of means away from. It's the two interior angles that are not next to the exterior angle. 
So 2 is right next to it. It's adjacent. Let's take it out of this theorem. We say that the measure of angle 1 is equal to the sum of the two remote interior angles. In this case, it would be 3 and 4. And this is kind of a shortcut theorem. There are times that it makes it easier for us to work with exterior angles. And if we know an exterior angle, we can find interior angles. So let's try one more example before we're done. Using the triangle exterior angle sum theorem, let's find the measure of angle 1. So give it a try here on the, the question slide. Well, using the exterior angle sum theorem, we would say that the measure of angle 1 is equal to the sum of the two remote, those interior angles that are away from angle 1. This angle right here is right next to it. The two remote ones are 80 and 18. So angle 1 is just 80 plus 18, or 98 degrees. Now let's apply it a little differently. So we'll give you a different looking triangle. So it'll kind of look like the one we have worked in the theorem. Let's say that the measure of an exterior angle is 124. The measure of this angle is 59 degrees. We want to find the measure of angle 2. Well, we use the same theorem. That the measure of the exterior angle, which is 124, that's equal to the sum of the two remote interior angles, which would be 59 plus the measure of angle 2. So you can see here we'd simply subtract 59 from both sides, and the measure of angle 2 would be 63 degrees.